Now, in 1979, a novel was published which is ranked as one of the top best-selling novels of all time. It's called A Woman of Substance and tells the story of Emma Hart, who begins as a maid in a wealthy Yorkshire family, is appallingly badly treated by the men in her life, but rises to become a rich and powerful businesswoman. When Channel 4 adapted the book into a miniseries in January 1985, it pulled the biggest audience the channel has ever had. Here, Emma is talking to the son of her employer, Edwin Farley. And earthly power doth then show likest gods when mercy seasons justice. Emma. Shakespeare. That speech of Portia's you read out to me. Well, I only read it once. You started me off on it. I've been opening the books in the library as well as dusting them. You have a beautiful voice. I've been practising to speak proper. <laughs> Properly. <laughs> it won't do for the servants all but one day one day oh one day i mean to be a lady Jenny Seagrove and Peter Telson as Emma and Edwin. Now, the series, along with the films of nine other novels, are to be shown on the Sony True Entertainment Channel starting on Monday. And the author of all those stories, there are actually 31 in all, is, of course, Barbara Taylor Bradford. Barbara, what impact did the films have when they were first released? You know, it's my husband, Jenny, who made all the movies... <clears throat> excuse me, as you know, and he he makes good movies, and I think that's why they did have the impact they did. I, I mean, it was amazing the numbers that were taken at, at Channel 4, and, of course, I almost teared up just then when I heard Jenny brought back memories. I With her Yorkshire the, accent. Um, yes, of course, <laughs> she had to learn to have a Yorkshire accent. Um, the the impact was has been enormous with all of the films. And when uh, Sony tried out a few of them in November and October of last year, they had the highest ratings they've ever had in the entire time that Sony Cable Television has existed and we knocked all the Hollywood movies off. So I think it's those well-made films and the actors. Bob always pays great attention to who the actors are and we had Deborah Carr as the elder Emma and Liam Neeson, who nobody knew was Blackie O'Neill and Tony... Um, Anthony um, Hopkins. Hopkins, thank you, went out of my head for a moment. Um, he was in one of the other ones. So I think it's a combination of things, a good story, good acting, and a, a glossy-looking movie. What inspired A Woman of Substance? Can you remember that far back, what it was that got you going on it? Well, I was a journalist, as you know, and I still am, and I kept wanting to write a novel, and I actually started four and put them away never got beyond 50 or 70 pages and I actually interviewed myself one day I sat down with the yellow pad and said what do you well I didn't say it of course I thought it what do you want to write about what kind of novel where should it be set and I answered all those questions and came up with a traditional saga set in Yorkshire and then I waited and thought and one day this little girl arrived in my head walking on the moors and I thought oh she's going to become a woman of substance and I actually had that thought early on and of course it became the title I don't know what inspired it my desire to write a saga what was it do you reckon about Emma that so excited your readers at that time Late seventies, and, and obviously still. still does. They saw people came to me at book signings, or they wrote to me, and it was always the same thing. 
she is our my role model. Every woman said that if she could do it with, with starting with nothing, I can. And I traveled the world. It was published all over the world. And I remember even in far off Australia, they said the same thing. A woman would say, you know, my daughter started a business because if Emma can do it, I, I can. I think it was the qualities in her. She wasn't perfect. Um, she had a, an unhappy private life sometimes. But she was determined, she was driven, she was ambitious, and she was a hard worker. All the things that I am. I yeah, took all she those was, there were elements of you in her, weren't yes, there? Yes, yes. But how do you suppose the message goes down with today's young people who feel, oh, it's impossible to get a foot in the housing market, I can't earn a decent wage through hard work, it's not like it used to be anymore? Well, I think I think that that just happens to be an attitude. Of course, I know people can't get jobs. I know there's a lot of people out of work. But I think you've just got to keep trying and not give up. Um, my great hero has always been Churchill, Winston Churchill. And he once said, never, never, never give up. And that's always been your motto, And I, I think suspect, that everybody it? should try again. So, you, look, if you want a job in real estate and you can't get one, then shift. Find something else that you can do. Because I think we can all do lots of things that we haven't tried to do. I mean, nobody knows this, but I love decorating. So I suppose if I can't write another novel, I could say, can I decorate your house? You know, and pay, you'll pay me for it. I think it's just not giving in, not giving up, keeping going, and wanting to do something. You've really got to want to write a novel, and you've really got to be able to tell a lot of lies, to tell a story. So you can teach somebody to write nice prose, but you can't teach somebody to have an imagination, the ability to tell things that didn't happen, therefore the lies, and you can't give, you can't teach people drive, discipline, or ambition now, that you're born with. Emma's career does alienate most of her her children. Why were you interested in whether it's possible to have a great career and a happy family? I think that you can't have everything in life. You know, a lot of people say, a lot of women who have jobs, careers and family and children say you can have it all. And I really don't believe you can have it all. Something has to, you have to compromise a lot. And I'm not sure why I did that unless I was looking to create more drama. You know, if you don't have a lot of problems in a novel, you have no story. <laughs> you once said... To be a successful woman, you need a good husband. Oh, yes. How did your husband inspire that thought? I mean, you said he's a great filmmaker, but what else is good about him? Well, of course, he's, he's got all the things that men have. You know, he's grumpy and irritable and he listens to me and then tells me a week later and when I remind him what I said, you never told me that because his other, his other thoughts have knocked out my conversation. I think... First of all, he's a, being a producer, he's creative. When you're making a movie and you're the producer, you're involved in clothing and actors and the director. You choose all those people. So he's creative and he understands my desire to write. He always gave me a lot of space. He encouraged me. I don't let him read anything until the book is finished, but then the, ed the editor doesn't get it either. I don't like to show people until a book is finished. He's been very supportive, very creative in making the movies. Um, he's nice. I like him as well as love him. We get on well. I think that I've been very lucky, actually. Now, you were one of the 90 Great <coughs> Britons celebrated by the Queen for yes. her 90th birthday. What makes a Great Britain? Well, I don't know. I suppose somebody who is it has achieved something, perhaps, given back in a way it, with philanthropy, which I have. Um, there's my little 
button of the OBE, which the Queen gave me. I suppose doing something for your country and being very patriotic, which I am. You know, I live in New York. Bob is American, but um, I'm an English woman living in New York. I'm English down to my toes and very patriotic. Um, I think people who have achieved something that could make the country say, oh, yes, she or he did well and gave us something, because it's a, a mixture of people. You know, there's actors and writers and whatever amongst that 90, but I was rather pleased to be called an icon. <laughs> Barbara Taylor Bradford, you are definitely an icon. Thank you very much indeed <laughs> Thank for you, being Jenny. with us this morning. Thank you. Now, for the past few weeks, we've been.